this is Anubias. And so is this and that. In fact, all of the plants you can see here are different forms of Anubias. So, if you are looking for a beautiful plant that is also low maintenance, reliable and beginner friendly, stick around. Today I will show you many different types of Anubias and tell you everything I know about growing them clean and keeping them healthy. I had a lot of success with this plant in the past and I will share everything I know about it. Anubias comes in many different forms, so there are quite few plants to choose from. Believe it or not, but there are around 40 different types of Anubias currently available on the market. They come in different sizes, starting from really tiny ones like this pangolino, a perfect plant for small nano tanks, going through medium sized like this beautiful Anubias Nana Gold that fits basically to any tank, and finishing with this fantastic Fastigolia, which could be good choice for big and tall aquariums. So you can really find some Anubias that fits to your size needs. But of course, you can also choose purely based on their looks. If you like plants with round leaves, you can go with Anubias Golden Coin. If you prefer something narrower, Anubias Paxing might be a good choice. Or maybe something longer? Then I would suggest Anubias Minima Variegata. You can have plants with darker leaves, like this Anubias Nana, or very light green ones, like here, in this Nana Gold version. There are so many that you will always find something that suits your needs. But Anubias plants are popular not only because they look great, but also because they are relatively easy to care for making them a great choice for beginners. They are not very picky when it comes to water conditions and tolerate wide range of water parameters. All you need to do is keep them stable. In general, just keep the water between 21 to 28 degrees Celsius and pH between 6.0 and 7.5. Avoid frequent changes in parameters and you will be fine. But now we come to the two most important points when it comes to keeping them. And first one is lighting. Anubias thrives in moderate to even low light levels and struggles when the light is too strong. They love to grow slowly in the shade of bigger plants or hidden under some hardscape like wood or bigger rocks. And if you don't have a lot of hardscape in your tank, it's always helpful to include a lot of floating plants that will protect your Anubias from stronger light. But why is it so bad for them? It's because they are slow growing plants and in very strong light, they would quickly be covered in algae that will be very difficult to remove. And thick algae layer will become problematic for the plant because it might disturb their photosynthesis process. And second important thing is feeding. Anubias plants have very strong root system, like you can see here. But it's not because they are substrate feeders. They take their nutrients directly from water column, so to keep them healthy, it's good to use liquid fertilizers, not root tubs. Of course, the amount and frequency strongly depends on the size of the tank and number of the plants. Small amounts of fertilizers dedicated for slow-growing plants will work great. And when it comes to CO2, it's really not necessary and they will do great without it. So, as the plants go, 
Anubias is one of the best choices for cheap and low-tech tanks without any fancy substrate, strong lights and CO2 systems. And last thing regarding Anubias care, when you notice some yellow or decaying leaves or leaves that are overgrown with algae, just remove them as soon as you notice something wrong. Removing any dead or decaying leaves will prevent them from affecting the healthy ones. And your plants will be fine and will grow new leaves eventually. To avoid and mitigate the problem with algae on Anubias leaves, I strongly suggest to include some cleanup crew. Few autosynclus and Cleton Corona snails can help you with keeping the leaves clean and healthy. And when we are talking about planting Anubias, it usually means that you should be anchoring it to something in your tank. Something meaning piece of driftwood, bigger rocks or small pebbles. Many people say that you absolutely cannot place them on the substrate, but this is not entirely correct. What you cannot bury is the rhizome. This is the part right there. Rhizome is this thick stem right there. This is the part from where the leaves and roots are growing from. And as you can see in this case, it can grow quite a lot. Burying it will result in rot and will eventually kill your plant but you can place it on top of the gravel and let the roots anchor themselves. As long as the entire rhizome is exposed, the plant will be fine. To attach those plants to your hardscape, you can use some cotton thread, fishing lines or fish safe super glue. Or you can just simply jam it into the cracks of your hardscape. It will attach itself eventually using those strong roots. And now I just have to mention some tricks that you can do with Anubias. First of all, those plants are very easy to propagate. If you want to do it, you can cut the rhizome into smaller sections and grow them into the new plants over time. It is very easy to do and I have a full video about this waiting for you already. See this? Those are the results that you can get at zero cost on your side. So go watch that video after you are done with this one. Next, if you don't have any tags running or simply don't have any space for your Anubias in the current setup, you can grow it immersed even if you kept it in the water this entire time. All you need is a container for it and some light. It can be a spare tank, it can be a jar or even a bucket because it doesn't need to be transparent. Just place small light on top of it and make sure that the container is humid inside. For example, with a foil on top. Spray it evenly every 2-3 to three days with clean water and it will keep growing for you immersed and free of algae. Works every time. And finally, don't be afraid to cut the roots. Anubias are using roots mainly to attach themselves, not as a nutrient intake. So, if you don't like having a lot of roots visible in your tank, you can just trim them from time to time. To wrap it up, Anubias plants are one of the best plants for your tank. Especially if you are a beginner. But I use them for years and still coming back for more. They are low maintenance, very easy to care for and incredibly diverse. Keep them in the shade, take care of the rhizome and they will grow in your tank for years. Let me know in the comments if you have any extra tips, leave a like if you like the video 
and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one.